Today I don't have a lot more to say about synthesis because despite it seeming to be a fairly complex topic, there are really only three components to a synthesis paper, uh, which would be source number one and the thesis relating to it, source number two and the antithesis relating to that, and then the section where those two different ideas are sort of reconciled. I've had some good questions come through uh, on the synthesis papers, and I hope to see more before the due date gets too close. Uh, but today what I want to talk about is going to be the proposal for the multi-sourced argument paper. Uh, there is going to be a rubric included for this paper, which will explain in approximately the same detail as what I'm about to say, but for those of you who like something that you can read through on your own, uh, there will be one. Uh, essentially, the proposal for the multi-sourced argument paper is a document that lets me know that you have an idea for this argument paper, that you have a position for the topic of this paper, and that you have started your preliminary work in order to complete it. So, when I have students write the proposal for this paper, I allow them to format it however they want. Uh, the page requirement for this proposal is two pages minimum. On those two pages, you can choose several different approaches. You can write a basic outline for that, which might detail your general ideas, where you think you're going to get your uh, resources, and a thesis statement. You might do something a little bit more generalized than that. You might do what's called a graphic organizer, where you sort of sketch out your idea, like your main thesis statement goes in the center in a circle, and then there are branches that have different ideas. <laughs> coming off of that, or your third option, which seems to be the most popular one, uh, especially for people who like to just sit down and start writing, is to write the first two pages of your paper. Uh, this is a pretty useful free writing technique because it's still going to include your thesis statement, which you can edit and adjust later on as the paper develops. But if you're writing the first two pages of the paper, you can also develop your introduction and start introducing the ideas that you intend to address within the paper itself. But when you submit it to me for my approval or disapproval, which doesn't happen often unless it's just completely impossible for you to write this topic or it doesn't fall into the guidelines that it's supposed to, I also go through and grade it as if it were a final paper. So I'm gonna go through and fix all of the spelling, punctuation, and grammar. I'm going to help with any mechanical things and I'll give suggestions for organization and stuff like that. So when you get it back, the first two pages of your paper have been completely corrected. And that way you don't have to go back and perform revision and editing steps. You can just continue with the paper itself. Now, the thing with the proposals is that when I grade them, you will generally, generally receive a 100% if it's approved or a zero if it's not approved. I'll attach a note to it in the comments and say, please contact me to discuss what needs to be done to approve this paper. If there's 100 on it, that means it's approved with no reservations and that you can continue on. All of the corrections that are included in the paper don't count toward any uh, specific grading or anything. It's more like I go through it as sort of a freebie, just like, you know, fix this, this, and this. Also, you've misspelled that, and a comma goes here. So it's not something that is a high-pressure document by any stretch of the imagination, but it is an important document for you because it gets you started on that multi-source paper. And it's an important document for me because it lets me know how I can potentially help you out in getting the paper written, getting the paper started, or getting the paper finished. So with that being due on 
I believe the Monday of next week is June 10th by 11.59 p.m. Uh, you should have your idea now. You should be developing a thesis statement. And you can apply the SAMI thesis statement formula to it. Once again, you may not incorporate a method into that. You absolutely may. Um, you're not limited to critical analysis approaches when you apply a method. Uh, you might engage in a qualitative analysis of something or, or something to that effect. So if you're not sure how to incorporate a method into it, feel free to contact me to try and get that piece of information included in your thesis statement. But uh, this document is just preliminary writing to start getting you thinking about what you're going to say in this paper and how you're going to say it as well as how you're going to support it. Um, other than that, there is not a lot else to be said. Uh, regarding the paper, we are going to develop work cited pages as well and you're going to submit those. The major reason why we get those work cited pages completed ahead of time is to make sure that the pre-research is complete because nothing slows down a paper like trying to research it while you're trying to write it. You don't have time to fact check or verify your sources. It's difficult to incorporate those sources in a fluid and fluent way. It will look like it's just tacked on there and it really disrupts your style as a writer. Another reason for creating this work cited page ahead of time is that toward the end of the semester, toward the end of the session that this class is, if you submit the paper and it doesn't have that included work cited page, it receives a late grade or it receives no grade until the work cited page is submitted. If for some reason I can't get in touch with you to request that document, it can be very detrimental to your grade. Um, and if the session ends and I have to submit grades before you've gotten that to me, you end up failing the class because that document has no grade on it. On the other hand, if you have submitted to me a works cited page ahead of the document, I can go back and go, well, this works cited page is already included, so we're good to go. So basically what it is is insurance against you forgetting to include your works cited page. The works cited page should still be included with the final submission, but if for some reason it's not, you don't get hammered with a late grade. So that's how that goes. So in closing, if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to email me. Please feel free to schedule a video chat with me. Uh, today I am going to be busy from uh, approximately 12.30 p.m. to about 3 p.m. Uh, because I have some academic duties that I have to fulfill at Murray State University. But uh, after that, I will be checking email and trying to reply to as many questions as are possible. Um, the assignment and rubric for the proposal are going to be set up in the assignment section. Uh, you can submit any time up to the 10th if you've already kind of got this idea rolling around in your head. But uh, like I was saying, the major component to include is a thesis statement that indicates your position. So the rest of it can be formatted however you like. Thanks and have a good day.